Hi everyone, welcome to my new uh, knitting podcast, new episode, episode 4 I believe. It's, uh, it's quite fun to do this, so uh, it's sunny outside and I felt like filming another podcast. Uh, so yeah, welcome if you're new here or welcome back if you've seen me before. Uh, I'm really glad you all uh, are watching this and yeah, let's get started. Um, as you can see from the title of the video, I have some thoughts I want to share. Um, I've been doing a lot, a lot of thinking the past month, month and a half, I believe, um, just with my own process of uh, burnout, which I mentioned previously, um, but also with knitting. And I think those two are um, connected with each other. I have struggled, uh, I'm struggling with um, being decisive, I'm really indecisive. I'm struggling to think, to um, know what I want and that all comes out with my knitting journey. Uh, so yeah, I want to talk about that in a little bit, but first I would like to show some um, the whips I have at the moment because I don't have finished objects at the moment. Uh, yeah. Oh, and before I start. What am I wearing? I'm wearing um, my vest I showed in a couple of episodes before. I believe this is vest number five from my favorite things knitwear. Um, and I made this in black alpaca boucle from Drops. So you can see that a little bit. Um, but yeah, I styled this vest over a cute floral blouse. To keep me warm. Um, okay, let's start with the whips. The first main whip I have is, of course, um, this sweater I'm making for my boyfriend. This is the Moby Sweater Man. Uh, and as you can see, I made some progress. The first sleeve is finished. Um, for those who are new here, this sweater is uh, quite a struggle. I started this in half December, I think, and it wasn't meant as a Christmas gift or whatsoever. Uh, I just wanted to make this at that time. Um, so yeah, my boyfriend went with me to the yarn store and I, he picked out this brown color. Um, the yarn I'm using is Drops Merino extra fine so this is a super rush 100% merino i'm curious to see how this will block but hey it's too late for that and the body just keeps on going and because this is a size large for a man it's quite big uh, it fits my boyfriend quite nice it's um, a little bit snug i feel like uh, around the stomach so i'm happy that it will grow that's just fine. Um, but I was really struggling. Don't know how to show this. Um, I think around the half of the body. And I kept on knitting and knitting. And I felt like I hadn't make, made any progress with it. And it just took so long. And every night uh, that I picked this up, I knitted like five rows. And that took me... An hour and a half, two hours sometimes. Um, so it wasn't fun. I didn't want to pick this sweater up to knit. <sighs> but then I started thinking like two weeks ago, maybe three. For, like, okay, I need to prioritize this sweater. If I want to have this finished like this winter, I need to prioritize it. And keep knitting a bit more on this. And I told you last time I um, put in some markers every time I started to knit. So they were like a little bit of apart, but it showed me the progress each night. And I could count like, uh, oh, maybe I have three, four nights left and then I can do the ribbing. And that really worked for me. But then I uh, discovered a huge mistake I made. I believe it was somewhere in the middle of like some crossover in the mock cables. And that bothered me immensely. And I know it wouldn't have bothered my boyfriend. Um, 
but it did me. And it was maybe eight rows back. So gosh, I um, needed to rip it out. Uh, because knitting back all these rounds was way too much uh, time. So I put in a lifeline afterwards, which was really tricky because how do you know which row you are on? Let's say I'm here, then exactly at this cross point, you have like two stitches crossing each other. Where do you need to, uh, in which loop you need to put uh, the needle? And then this part in the middle is okay. Uh, this, this is fine now. The cable <laughs> was also almost at uh, like the switching point of the cable. And then the mass stitch. Somehow, after all this mass stitch I have done, I'm not able to read this. I don't know which row is what. So, um, good luck. I, it, it cost me one night to put the lifeline in and another night to... Uh, rip it all back and make sure everyone uh, of every stitch was on the same row. <sighs> but yeah. Uh, then I just started to knit again with my progress um, markers because I needed to finish this. Um, and after some nights I just asked my boyfriend, hey, would you like to try this on? Because I want to see, see how far I am. Because according to the pattern I had to make it yeah, a certain amount of centimeters and it was still a long way to go um, so he tried it on and I was like oh, okay I'm nearly there I believe I'm already very there so I just did like four rows and then the ribbing and it was just fine I um, even um, picked up some other sweaters my boyfriend just has and I laid this on top of this to measure out where am I, how long does it need to be. And it was good. It was good already. So the pattern apparently is uh, quite long, even for men or for my boyfriend, at least. Um, so I made it a bit shorter, but also kept in mind that this probably will grow. Um, I mean, the sweater is quite heavy already. Um, but yeah, it was really a relief that the body was finished suddenly. And um, then he also said something about his birthday is coming up and that he got, yeah, gets a sweater for me for his birthday. And I was like, oh, okay, didn't thought of that, uh, that this sweater could be for his birthday. But yeah, it's um, beginning of March, so it gives me um, a deadline, which I think will work for me because then I just know I have two weeks to do two sleeves, one week per sleeve. Just go, go, go. And I need to finish this. Um, so I picked up the sleeves. And honestly, this, sleeve, this one was really quick. I believe I knit this in about four days um, and I could do like 20 rows per day easily. The sleeve also I made a bit shorter. Um, because I think it will grow out or stretch out and it will be fine now. But because you have only one cable to do and the rest is all mustache, this was so much quicker, so much faster. It was yeah, quite fun actually. So yeah, just one sleeve to go and I still have plenty of time. I would like to have this finished next week, just in a week. And I still don't really like knitting this sweater. I, I have another project I'm really excited for and I just want to knit that all day long or start something new. But <laughs> I said to myself, I'm not allowed to cast on anything new until this is done. It's harsh. It's not always fun, but it needs to be done because otherwise I'm afraid I will have this finished in a couple of months and I can't deal with another couple of months with this sweater so yeah next time this will be a finished object so, this is my whip number one yeah. I'm gonna have some tea The next one is my sock and I didn't make much progress with this at all. I don't know if I started this one 
already last time or just started it since i don't know um but yeah i'm working on the sock and i'm using a um, hand dyed yarn from lana grossa and the sock is purple the outside is blue so it's a fade in the in i'm pulling from the inside and it's purple it has some specks in them and eventually the specks will turn blue because this is my second sock the first sock i've already done and i showed you last time forgot to uh, take it with me it's upstairs um, so yeah i'm gonna get that sock hold on okay i'm back so this is the first sock i showed you this last time um, but it's a fade from purple and purple speckles to blue speckles and then yeah, the background as you can see is a little bit more purple on this side and blue on this side um, i didn't reach the um, bright blue the last time because i have tiny feet as you can see but that's okay with the scraps i'll make some color work something i don't know um but yeah this was my first sock actually so this is my first pair and i would have liked to make this uh, sock a little bit further and maybe finish because I already saw myself like knitting a pair of socks each month because I liked it. But then, um, yeah, my other whips had priority or were too much fun. And this is my project to bring with me um, in my bag when I'm going somewhere, which is not a lot. Honestly, um, I don't have... I'm not working at the moment um, so i don't go outside all that often and when i do i don't have to wait all that much so i don't work on this at home a lot well, anyways i hope next time it will be finished or close to finished because i would like to wear these and make other socks i have a lot of sock yarn and yeah so not much to say about this um the yarn i used um, I will um, put in a description bar what it is and what the name is exactly. It's easier for me now. And then my last whip and this most exciting one. And that's this Monday sweater. Oh, the color pops on the screen. I don't know if the color is really correct, but... Um, a couple of weeks ago, I went to a crafts fair with some knitting friends and uh, Femke from the Mindful Creators vlogged that day. So if you would like to see that, I'll link her video down below. It's really, it was really fun and I um, picked up some beautiful yarns and I'll show you them uh, in a little bit. But one of the yarns I picked up was meant for this Monday sweater, although I didn't plan it. It was uh, Femke was making the um, Monday sweater and wanted yarn for that. And another friend, Heike, die wilde. Uh, she wanted to make the Lento. And I was really indecisive. But when I saw the yarn, I knew I uh, wanted to make the Monday sweater as well. So the Monday sweater by Petit Knit is a simple raglan sweater with um, a raised bag with the German short rows and it's just with fingering weight and maybe you can see this already but I'm using the hand dyed yarn and um, the brand is Abmeska it's a Lithuanian brand and I don't have the uh, full skeins yet because I'm working with three skeins at the same time so I have three cakes And one of them is in uh, another dye bath. And as you can see, it's a lot more red than the other ones. Um, so I'm alternating all three skeins at the same time with helical knitting. It's a little bit fiddly sometimes, uh, especially with the uh, increases. But the yarn is so, so beautiful. Um, and I just fell in love with the colors. And as you may know, 
I'm a big fan of colors. Um, <laughs> you can see it in my blouse. Uh, and I really like pink. And this has a little different hues of pink. So there's a bright pink, um, a darker or muted pink. There's purple in this, a little bit of red. So I don't mind actually that one of the strands is, with, uh, is a little bit more red. Because as you can see, um, it all blends really beautifully. I know where the, the red uh, yarn is. Maybe you can see it a little bit. No, it's every three rows and this is too big or, of a row gauge. But yeah, it's, it's really beautiful. So I'm just working on the body now. I bought three skeins and I'm using them, as I said, so I don't know how I'm doing the um, sleeves yet, because all three skeins are on my project at the moment. And I would like to keep it that way, so I have as little uh, loose ends as possible. Because as you can see, I'm just knitting with this yarn. And this yarn, by the way, is um, merino with silk. So it's really soft, it has a really lovely drape. It's a little bit shiny and it's gorgeous. And I'm not using any mohair with it. Although the um, pattern calls for mohair and my friends are using mohair. I kind of uh, have a mohair ban or not. Nah, I don't like to wear mohair. So I want to stop at the moment just for maybe this whole year or this season. I don't know yet, but mohair is really itchy for me. And as a result of that, I wear my knits um, way less than I would like to. So this sweater, I'm using just this merino um, silk combination. And it's a little bit thinner because of that. I hope it will wear beautifully. Um, and as you can see, especially when I just have one layer, it's a little bit see-through. And my gauge was off. And my gauge is smaller than the pattern says. So I made a size or two up. I'm making um, an extra large. And according to my calculations, I should end up with a small to medium. And the pattern calls for um, a lot of gauge. But as you may know, I like my clothing to be a little bit loose fitting, a little bit oversized. I just feel more comfortable with that. Um, don't like when things are really tight under my armpits. Um, so yeah, I made sure it's big enough, and it is. I could try it on actually, but you have to um, excuse me a bit. Then I uh, have to put a cord in it. So I'm gonna try this on. So here is the sweater on. As you can see, it's a beautiful color, and it complements me very well, as I may say so. Um, which is why I picked the color. I really love pink and I really like uh, this dark magenta berry uh, color. I don't know. I'm now here at, I, I think almost the middle, as you can see, I'm wearing sweatpants, of course. Um, but like my belly button is here, so I don't have a lot left to go and um, I'm really short. I'm uh, 160 centimeters, uh, 1 meter 60 centimeters. Uh, so yeah, and as you see, there's a lot of positive ease. It's a bit lower here under the arms, but that's really intentional for me. I really like that. I just hope the sleeves are not too big and will taper out um, like smaller beautifully. But uh, I'm not the kind of girl for tight knit sweaters. I don't, I didn't want to have this feel like, um, like a t-shirt with long sleeves because I don't ever wear that. Uh, so I just want to feel the, like it's a sweater still, um, but it's a little bit thinner and I think it will be a nice transition piece for the transitional weather. I can keep this on. Um, don't mind the pink uh, tape for my um, injury shoulder injury. Maybe it's knitting related. I'm not sure yet. Uh, I hope it isn't. And it, it's, yeah, I'm getting help for it. 
Um, but yeah, this is my most exciting whip at the moment. And I think you can understand that. Um, and this is one of the yarns I bought at the um, craft fair. So I will show you the other things I got there. And some other yarn I got at my local yarn store. Um, but first I wanted to dive in with what I said at the beginning. My brain process for the last month and a half. And what I'm thinking about. And it has... Um, yeah, it started with my lack of inspiration and I just didn't know what I wanted to knit up as a next project. And I really felt the pressure that um, my next project, when, um, like over the Christmas holidays, I finished my black vest. I uh, was working on a Moby sweater. I finished my sweater number 18 and I felt like I'm coming to an end. I need something new soon. Otherwise, I will have nothing. Um, so I really felt the pressure to have a new project. And also that that project needed to be the best one I could think of. Um, in, term, and in terms of wearability. So no mohair, for example. That's one of my intentions, knitting intentions. Or um, the, the fit, it has to be loose fit. I want, I'm really a sweater knitter, so I would like to knit sweaters. But uh, winter is slowly coming to an end, uh, thankfully. It's really sunny out today and I feel like spring is coming. And I don't want to make really thick sweaters that I maybe won't, yeah, don't even wear until like October. Uh, so I just felt that pressure and as I said in the beginning with my burnout symptoms I'm really struggling with um, deep thinking I'm struggling with um, making decisions and it all came down to uh, I just felt blank and indecisive and I started coming out of this um, firstly I made a sock that helped um, the craft fair and someone else making this decision kind of for a Monday sweater helped a lot and I worked a lot myself to come out of this slump, this knitting slump uh, I felt like. And also, which is why I wanted to talk about this, is I see it around me on Instagram, um, maybe on YouTube or in my knitting group that we all have so much Knitting patterns we want to make eventually, maybe, but which one is the right one for now? Or um, spring is coming up, summer eventually. I would like to knit uh, a summer top. I haven't made a summer top. Yeah, last year I made some quick, simple um, cotton ones, but they're not that fancy. Um, but how many sleeve sleeves? Summer tops do I need in the summer? In the Netherlands, where I'm from, um, we don't have really hot summers, maybe like a heat wave. Um, and I will wear them on holiday, maybe. But otherwise, I can't wear sleeveless tops to work. Or, um, I, uh, for example, I like to wear sleeveless tops um, without a bra. I'm really fine with that. But... It not around all uh, all the people, so yeah, don't know what to knit up yet as a summer top, uh, but that's okay. It it will come. Um, so what I did to come out of this like slump and this pressure and this search for this, this hunger for a new next perfect project, I um, made like a, a kind of mood board in Notion, the app. And all the patterns I felt like they're me or uh, that excited me that I would like to make. And I just, like I said, I made a mood board. And the ones I would want to make uh, first, I put on top. Um, so I kept myself busy a lot with this. And uh, through seeing all these pictures from these patterns so much and thinking about them and wearability, uh, it helped me to select some. 
uh, funnily enough, I only uh, bought yarn, yarn for one of those projects at the fair, um, but that's okay. Um, knitting has to be fun, this journey, this process has to be fun. And I um, lost that a little bit. I mean, the process of knitting, sitting on the couch, I usually sit over here, um, is still really fun for me, but the choosing the next project wasn't anymore. Um, so I don't want to be really strict, but I want to be intentional. And it's a, it's a hard balance. And a balance of inspiration, having inspiration, and a balance of my intentions, like no mare, mohair, um, wearability, fit, and in the, yeah, the balance with the pressure, or try not to put any pressure on myself. And I think, yeah, I'm not the only one dealing with this. Um, so yeah, I just want to see it like, uh, knitting is a hobby and the process of knitting the garment itself, that should be eventually the goal, uh, like process versus project knitting. And I'm kind of in between. I really like to have my finished um, object to be yeah, something I would like to wear, of course, but I want to make, uh, knit more intentionally. So yeah, I like to um, want to focus more on the process of knitting and the garment that comes out of this, like this, this can be my happy uh, consequence, my happy gift that comes out of this. But all the hours I spent knitting it, that should be my main focus. So my intention one, wearability. I made intention two, having fun. Just enjoy and yeah, try to reduce the pressure. Um, so yeah, my mood board really helped. Um, a little bit of inspiration from friends helped. And what also helped was uh, shopping, well, uh, shopping yarn and having new yarn and um, see if I can have inspiration from the yarn itself instead of just going from the pattern first. I would like to have this pattern and I will um, make, or make this pattern and I'll search yarn for it. Uh, or I would like to have um, like a cardigan and I'm going to search a pattern and then yarn. But now I'm getting inspired by the yarn itself. So that's something new and really exciting. So I'm going to show you what I bought recently. And if you've seen my previous video, you probably think, Claudia, what the hell do you need with so much yarn? Because in my last video, I showed a lot of yarn as well. Um, but yeah, it's just what makes me happy at this moment. And a buying ban doesn't work for me. I hope the yarn will uh, last me a long time. I can knit the coming month as much as I want. I made a yarn inventory in my knitting journey, journal. Sorry, I can show you that. Like this is one of the pages. So this is the page for my new and exciting yarn. And then I have a page of yarn. Uh, scraps or like when I have a skein and a half or two skeins left um, I have to search for projects for this but that's for another time and another podcast maybe so yeah yarn haul the fun stuff um, when I was at the craft fair I uh, really wanted to look at hand dyed yarn because that's not Something I can buy easily at the store here. Um, so yeah, that, that was my main goal. And I felt myself being tricked or being pulled again towards really bright colors. And as you can guess, maybe pinks. So I bought this one. This is by a Dutch brand called Wol met Verven. And it, it pops, really pops. So you have a, like neon pink over here and a soft light pink, bright pink. There's a little bit of orange and red and some purple speckles in this. 
And this is 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. So it's a sock yarn. Um, I'm not going to make socks with this. I bought two skeins. Oh my god, this is so pretty. Um, and I want to make a summer top. I don't know what kind of top would I don't want to make. I don't know yet. So it's not the softest because it's sock yarn. There's nylon in it. Um, but I'm hoping it will be fine. And the colors are just too much fun. So yeah, I bought this. And um, what else? I bought a really beautiful dark navy. This is Novita Woolly Wood. This skein is a 100 gram skein. And it has, uh, let's see, 225 meters or 246 yards. And it's 70% modal or tencel, you can call it, and 30% merino. So most of this yarn is tencel. And maybe you don't know, maar, uh, but tencel is uh, a fiber, I believe it's made from bamboo. So it's a plant-based fiber and it's quite good for for the environment, I believe, um, and it's really cool. So I would like to make this uh, with this um, champagne cardigan by Petit Knit in a dark blue. So it goes with everything. And this yarn hopefully will uh, make it a little bit lightweight and a summer version of this. So I bought six skeins of this because I don't want to run out of this. Um, and I'm really excited. I really want to cast this on, but I have to finish the Moby sweater first. So yeah, really beautiful, just quite simple. And it was, um, I had to decide between this one and a really like soft pink, which I liked. Um, but I felt like this would work all year round on top of everything. And a soft pink is, I, I like pink. Um, is a little bit sweet maybe, a little bit too sweet sometimes and I'm maybe I will still make a soft pink cardigan, I don't know. But yeah, I'm gonna make my first cardigan with this. And so this is quite a neutral for me, as you can see. And then when uh, we were already uh, actually uh, thinking about leaving again because it was really busy over there um, my friends um, found a stand uh, that sold Noro yarn so I just had to see it for myself I had to feel it and then uh, yeah I just fell in love with this yarn so this is Noro Sonata and this yarn is in the most beautiful blue color it's like a cobalt royal blue and it has a little bit of purple tones in this as you can see so it's a really deep blue and i like blue um, this is a blend of cotton viscose silk and um, polyamide polyamide um, so yeah this is also quite a nice summer yarn i think so i bought two skeins yeah. Um, to knit a summer top with I don't know which one and this is a little bit less this 100 grams is 300, 360 meters per skein and this is 100 grams and 420 meters so this is a, a really light fingering weight and this is a little bit thicker and I don't know if you can see it but I feel like the strands are not all that even like some of them are a little bit thicker and some are a little bit thinner. It's not a huge difference, but I'm really excited to see how this will knit up. I haven't made a swatch yet, just been enjoying watching these skeins. And yeah, I do that almost every night. It's so stunning. Um, so yeah, those are the yarns I bought at the yarn fair. And then I had to go to my local yarn store, which is uh, Wolplein. 
for the duchies. For a friend, I had to pick, um, I pick up some yarn for her. And then I was upstairs looking around and I saw they have their seal still going on. And this seal is going strong for a couple of weeks or maybe months now. And I've already uh, splurged in that seal and this time again. So firstly I saw this yarn. It's a light sweet by Fildar. This is Fildar Phil Berlingot Tweed Colorée. And this is a blend of cotton, viscose and polyester. So again, a really nice summer yarn. Um, and it has cute focus, brown, light brown speckles. First time in, in a long time I picked uh, yeah, a really neutral color for me. Um, and I bought 10 skeins of this because it's 50 grams for 125 meters or 137 yards. So 10 skeins and I want to make a cardigan with this. I just envisioned this immediately as a cardigan. I feel like tweed is kind of a cardigan material for me. Um, and maybe I will make the car champagne cardigan as well with this. Or maybe um, the field day cardigan by Ozetta. I'm not sure yet. I'm still deciding between like a raglan or a drop shoulder. I like both. Um, or, and I think I want to have a v-neck. That I'm sure of. So yeah, this is really cute. And all the yarn in the seal there is 50% off. So it's really, really affordable now. So yeah, uh, this is fun. I already made a swatch and I liked it. And it's really soft. And lastly, I picked up this Lana Grossa Cool Wool Big in a really beautiful dark purpley eggplanty color. And this is a hundred percent merino. 50 grams is 120 meters. Um, so yeah, this is like a sweater yarn and I bought a sweater quantity. I bought 12 skeins of this. Um, so I'm really, I want to make sure I have enough yarn for like a winter sweater. Maybe sweater number 18 by my favorite things knitwear or maybe the Marseille sweater by Petite Knit and then just in one color because I will really would like to uh, make the Marseille sweater uh, in pink with red stripes. That's just, I would like to have that. Um, but then I need to find the yarn, but this color spoke to me. So yeah, I believe this is everything I can show you and I wanted to talk about. Thank you so much if you're still watching now till the end. Um, I'm really Really grateful for you all uh, watching me. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you want to. And I'll see you in the next podcast. Bye bye.